Hey everybody, so I know you just got your Wise car, you've got it unpacked, you've driven it, and let's say it's a little, let's say underwhelming for the speed and the turn radius. Well, what can we do about it? I'm gonna show you how you can take apart just a couple of simple things inside, get a plug and play setup with just one additional board, everything you can easily grab off of Amazon, and take your Wise car from something like this, into something like this. Three, two, one, go. Hey. And honestly, anybody can do it. I'm gonna walk you through every step of the process. We're gonna do a camera feed right over top. And then if you also, you know, because I've obviously changed mine, I put a white camera in and used the black one elsewhere, but some of the cool dump truck features, you know, I actually found a guy on uh, Etsy, Justin, who prints all kinds of cool stuff for Wise products, not just the Wise car. So we'll talk about that as well. And then after we've made it faster, we'll talk about maybe some other upgrades. I'll do some future videos, because maybe we want to make the wheels bigger. So it rides a little easier. It also has a little more height, a little wider, so it's more stable because faster speed, you know, we need a little more stability. And also some oil-filled shocks. Give it a real RC feel, the bounce, instead of the plastic that comes with it. Um, so if you're interested in doing this, join me. We're going to get into it. All right, boys and girls. So you've got your wise car. We're going to take off the camera, take off the rack. That's simple. Or if you just got it, the rack's already off. And that's basically where we're going to start at. Now what you'll notice is there's this flatbed screwed on top. We gotta just undo the six screws. So there's one here, here, and here on both sides. So in the middle and then the two ends. You'll see it because there's basically the only screws holding it on. Um, so let's talk about what we're trying to do. So essentially the Wise car runs off of the five volt battery pack and it's five volts, two amps, but that's controlling your camera, that's controlling your steering, and then what power's left over is going to those motors, which is essentially why it's so slow. So what we wanna do is we're gonna leave the battery pack to run your uh, camera and steering, but we wanna take the signals that are going to the motors and instead run them to a board. As you can see in the top left, it's called an L298N, and that's what I got here. I got it right off of Amazon, and it's basically a motor driver you would use with Arduino. So what I've already got hooked up is a wire going out to motor one and what would go out to motor two. And then the only other thing you need is your power source, which I also got off of Amazon. Link in the description for everything. This is a 7.4 volt lithium battery, like for an RC car. Now, having said that, what we're doing here, if you have the space, is gonna work for pretty much any cheap RC car as well. Because we're just, in my words, we're intercepting the signals that would go to the motors, running them through here, and basically they're just triggering our motors to run off of this seven volt battery. All right, so after you take off your screws, you're gonna pop it open. And then you'll see there's not a lot of things going on in here and a whole lot of room for us to make some upgrades. So my idea was to have the motor driver fit right in here like that upside down. And it fits, and we can put everything back on top, we're good to go. But let's talk about how this thing works. So if you can see coming in, we've got power coming from your USB cable. That's coming in right here. It comes across and then these four, this is what's going out to your camera. So there's a positive and negative and the two in the middle are the signals. This little teeny thing right here, which we're not gonna touch, that is your little LED and it actually runs off of 3.3 volts. It's not a five volt item after I tested it. It's actually 3.3. And then this next one here, again, we're not going to have to touch. This is a 
this is your steering. So we're gonna leave that, don't have to do anything with it. What we're gonna do is these. So what I did with my first car is I took and I cut the wires here and there, and then I soldered them to go to that little red board that you see on the side. Um, if you look, it says input one, input two. So basically I ran the wires from here to this little red board. And those pins, let's see if I can get it to focus. These pins right here, there's input one, input two, input three, input four. Basically, however you have them wired up is gonna drive the direction coming out for the motors. And the good thing is, it doesn't really matter. Like if you hook it up backwards, it's not gonna do anything except run the motor the wrong way. You either flip it around here and plug it back in, or you take your screws out here and just flip your direction of your motor around there isn't much you can really screw up other than when you hook up the power. The power is labeled though. So the plug coming in right here, again, we just need it to focus. There we go. So where I've got the red, that's your input input in. You can do up to 12 volts on one of these boards. I just did seven. And then the black in the middle is gonna be your ground. Simple as that. Now, you could, like me, take these, cut and solder them and all that. But what I did is I just looked on Amazon to find some extra cords with the same connectors. So I could basically unhook where the motors are now. So we're gonna take the two, like I said, the easy way to tell them is the two that are right next to each other those are the ones that are gonna be your front and back. And again, it doesn't matter because they both spin the same direction. So we could hook them up either way. You could even unplug these two, plug them back in in the, in the different plug, and it's still gonna run the same. All right, so my thought is, instead of doing all the soldering and everything, we just actually unplug them, and I'll plug them directly into my board instead. And then what I'm gonna do as well, if anybody's interested, I'll set up one of these kits, basically with all the wiring already connected and little instructions of just how to do it. So since I've already got my plug and everything hooked up, I'm gonna take and put my plugs in. So I've got input one, input two. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter which motor I'm turning because one's the front and one's the back. So we've got this one and we've got this one. And I think they're JST connectors or maybe the this one's a JST connection. Either way, I'll have the link in the description. So that's step one. But the only other thing left to do is go ahead and get the two connections that come in here. And again, what I did is I took one of those same connectors and set it up with one of the JST connector ends. Because what I found is that actually fits really easily onto this board. So I don't have to really do much except, you know, if I hook it up backwards, flip it around but it's kind of plug and play. So I'll plug one of them in here. And what I'm gonna do as well is I'll do a separate link to a video that I watched that helped give me a good understanding of how this wiring is supposed to be set up. And let me just turn this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I've got one plugged in, I'm gonna do the other one real quick. Just gonna do them the same direction just for sake of time. And the other wire right here. And like I said, if you buy the kit from me, I'll have the wiring and everything already hooked up. And then all you would have to do is just plug it in here, here, and then your two wires to your motor ends. The last step is basically getting a ground wire to go from 
right here because when I read the video and watched how it was hooked up, basically it said if you're using a separate power source, like which we are, this little um, lithium battery, we need the ground to connect to the ground on this other board. So I've got to get a wire to go from here all the way over to right here. And on mine, the ground is actually the little red wire. See, it says G and D. So we need to connect a wire from the ground on my new red board over to here, and then that's it. It'll work. So let me do that real quick, and then we'll get it turned on. All right, so what I saw is I was looking to take the plug from this red board and run it out through this little hole down here. It won't fit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, I unscrewed it from here, right there. I'm just going to run the red wires back up through. And then the rest is just basically tucking everything back in. All right, so where we're at right now is I took a little black wire and I wrapped it around the wire right here. I used a pair of tweezers to get it in there. Ideally, you would want to just solder this. But for now, I just took and bent it and kind of wrapped it around and made sure it's not touching anything else. And then, like I said, it's just a ground wire. But this is key for the motors to actually turn on is to make sure the ground is connected between the two boards. And I'll come back and I'll hit this with a soldering iron. But if you follow what I did with getting all of these connectors, this right here would be the only Thing you would need to solder all right so let's now just go ahead and see if we can tuck everything back in oh actually I've got to connect the ground so since I ran my plug up through here in the middle I've got the plug going in and I've got to connect my ground at the same time so the two grounds will be connected then we're done All right, so I've got my ground wires connected. So I've got this little black wire that runs from here all the way over to the board, and that's it. So what I've done now is I've went ahead and plugged in my battery, and you see the little red LED is turned on. So that's good there. And also I plugged in my battery bank, so you can actually see the little red LED on the Wise car board actually turned on as well. You see it reflecting off the black there. So I've got a red light there, red light here, and that's it. So now what I can do is I'm just gonna kind of position it so I can lift up the wheels because I don't want this thing to take off when I hit the button. And I've got my video feed coming in on my camera so I know it's on. Look at that. That's at least triple the original speed. And that's it. So the only thing we've got to do at this point is to go ahead and tuck the wires back in and you're done. But now basically all I've got to do is just put my board back on top and everything is good to go. So I will catch you in just a moment. All right, so here's an update on what we've done so far. Um, we've got the camera back on with its original rack and I've got the connections everything all soldered inside and what I did with that blue battery is just actually put electrical tape on it to make it black put a velcro strip and strapped it underneath so when you're looking at it for the most part you can't even tell it's there and the last thing we got to do is put the original rack back on and we'll be good to go but so far so good yeah, let's take it for a quick drive And obviously the kids love it much more that it doesn't get stuck on a leaf. Then what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about oil filled RC shocks to replace the basic plastic shocks that came with it. Catch you next time.